So, good morning um, for you. Good afternoon for us in uh, Europe and the UK. And uh, I think I recognise most people. It's a nice, uh, nice small group, which is good. Um, so I'll do some talking, and we'll do some breakout groups, um, similar to when I took the, the session a couple of weeks back. But today. Um, I think it was billed as um, examining the habits that we consider good, the ones that we consider bad, and one that, sort of, that we consider just plain ugly. Um, and we're going to try and delve into what transformative energy we need to, to change those habits into ones that we might like the look of. It's quite interesting, I think, taking it from this angle of good, bad and ugly, because um, it seems strange in the sense of Zen to start by calling one habit good and one bad, one habit ugly. Um, it's coming from a starting point of um, discrimination, if you like, um, which is the opposite to where we want to be with our Zen practice. Um, because at the end of the day, habits, or the energy is just the habits or the energy whether they're good or bad. Um, but if you take, if you take, if you take eating as a habit, which for more, most of us, I'm sure it is, you know, is it a good habit for you? Is it a bad habit or is it an ugly habit for you? Um, we, could, we can split it down. And for some people, it's clearly going to be a good habit, you know, depends what they're taking in. And for some people, it could be, you know, a pretty painful, ugly, ugly habit in that just thing, the just thing of, of, of eating. Um, so the way I've looked at these good, the good, the bad and the ugly is that I'm going to take it this morning anyway, I'm going to take a good habit as being something that will bring us closer to love, joy, make us more accepting and make us more compassionate. So if we can think of habits that create those things then we'll, for this morning, we'll call that good. Now, the bad habits, let's just think of things that I would say that create our own suffering, create suffering within ourselves. So despair, anger, and cravings that we have. Um, I have a few good examples of that in my own life from probably from 15 years ago when I was um, probably, I would consider myself to be suffering a lot. And um, I was at a time in my life where I was working disproportional hours, silly hours, long days. Um, and at the end of the day, I would, I, would drive, I would drive home, which at the time was about an hour and a half to drive to get home. And often at the end of that day, I would just pull into the gas station to fill up the car with uh, petrol. And as I got to the counter, probably because my days were so long and frantic, uh, I may not have eaten, um, and if I had, I probably didn't remember. So, and I would stand in front of the gas counter and see all the chocolate bars. So, and I probably already have some coffee that I just bought to keep me awake to get home. I'd be pretty tired. And I would then buy myself a handful of chocolate bars and climb into the car. And I'd find myself about 25 minutes later on the highway, on the road home, having drunk the chocolate and eaten all of the chocolate bars. You know, wasn't something I was enjoying, wasn't something I needed. It was just something that trying a habit that I'd got into just to remove myself, try and remove myself from suffering as I would have seen it at the time. Um, so, and off the back of that, strangely enough at the time in my life, I was um, suffering enormously from headaches. No surprise. Um, and I always tell people the story that I never knew how much I was suffering from headaches because until a year later, or maybe two years later, when um, my life had collapsed. And about 12 months after the collapse, I had to go to a meeting and I took out my briefcase that I used to use in my work. And I put the jacket on that I hadn't worn for a year that I would wear to meetings. And in my pockets, it was stuffed with uh, paracetamol that I was obviously taking a lot of. And I remember opening the briefcase and seeing the pockets of the briefcase full with paracetamol. 
So it was a way I was just sustaining myself through habitually to keep myself going. Um, so these bad habits, of suffering a poor posture might be one of them. I always talk about these days about too much noise, that people relentless, um, drinking too much, long working hours. They're there um, and the restlessness that people have these days. They're, they're just bad habits. They create our own suffering. And then we can look at ugly habits um, where I think we can talk about, well, we make the world suffer. Yeah. Where our actions just make the world suffer. I mean, we're seeing a lot of it at the moment in the world from world leaders, where they're just making people's lives miserable and um, creating enormous suffering. And we all do it in our own way. We all create our own wars. And through, I see myself through my bad habits, creating coming creating my own ability to create my own wars um at that time i was just talking about we had in our offices we had um a glass office that used to be re- known as the goldfish bowl um and it would be joked within the company that, that if i got people inside the goldfish bowl then they could stand by you know my rage and anger at the time with them um, would be such so we'd created, I'd created these habits. Um, and so you've got this energy that's running through you. Um, now, we could ask the question, what's the big deal if we want to get rid of, why do we want to get rid of habits or why do we want to change habits? What's the big deal about it? And the big deal about it really is that it, by doing so, it creates freedom for us, brings freedom. And um, we're not talking political freedom here. Um, We're talking about something much deeper, which is personal freedom. And this freedom isn't available to us. It's not available to us if we get caught by our fears and our worries. Once we get caught up in the fears and the worries, our freedom is lost. Um, Now for me, Zen, is about fully experiencing each moment. It's about living life deeply. Yeah. And to do that, we mustn't to do it. You've not got to get you've not got to get caught in the experience. Once you're caught in the experience, you're not living life deeply. Um, that's because once we get caught in the experience, it just becomes another layer of self. Yeah, we become our own anger. We become our own rage. We become our own craving. Yeah. And, um, and we know from our Zen practice and, and what we know that the self, the self doesn't exist any more than a cloud does in the sky. Yeah. So it's important for us as part of our practice not to get caught in that experience. It's to experience it, but not get caught in it. Um, now, if we take a look at our, our own habit energies, um, we could say what we want to try and do then is create more habits around the good, um, more habits around the good habits. Yeah. So we're looking at things that are taking us towards joy, more accepting, more compassion. And less of the bad habits so then we we get into our bad habits and we ask the question is how easy is it to get rid of these habits what is the challenge around getting rid of bad habits um there's one thing for sure and that's we all have we all have insight um we know i knew when i got into that car with three mars bars or three chocolate bars in my hand and a cup of coffee yeah, that this is not a good idea. Even in that world that I was working in at the time, I just know devouring three chocolate bars, it's not a good thing for me, yeah. But the habit, we've got this habit, this energy running through us that's got me hooked onto onto this thing, whatever it might be. Um, And we know we don't want to spend all our time and our energy getting hooked more. 
yeah it has it has lots of health consequences as, as one thing um so what i suggest we want to, i'd like to do is we've got probably two small groups here but if we could um i'd just like to break into i don't know um how much time we've got here probably uh we could probably have 15 minutes take us about halfway i should think so if we break into if jen can break us into some groups I want to ask the question where you can just in the small groups just share your your good bad and ugly habits and just explore in your own mind what sits behind some of those habits that we have you know if i was asking myself what what sat behind the habit of getting into the car and eating three chocolate bars i'd have a good idea yeah so I've got to break down the other part first. So if we could just break into groups, um, breakout rooms, hopefully Jenna will spin us into a room and we can just chat about that question. If anybody, um, we'll do a quick harvest of the groups if you like. So if anybody has a, you know, try and keep it down to a, a minute or a little bit over a minute of what you might have take, taken from the group um, or if somebody in the group wants to, represent the group that would be great so if you, you anything that came up that that stood out to you then then please share so bethany yeah thanks so much um just two two quick points that really stood out to me um in our conversation and one was um the awareness or or in awareness um, or naivety of what our habits are. Um, and I think that you gave the great example of that, Andy, of kind of discovering that that paracetamol in your briefcase. It just, you hadn't been aware that that was a habit until you were beyond that habit. And so um, some of us struggle to figure out, gosh, what, what are the habits that we have currently? The other part of that is how others interact with our habits and what might be considered a good habit for us um, might be perceived as harmful to somebody else, right? So the example was spending time doing zazen and, and the, the time doing zazen is taking away from time with other people that we care about. And, you know, is, is, is that a bad, you know, is that a bad habit? Is that a, an ugly habit or is, is that, their habit that is seeing your your good habit in in some other way so that that interaction and their interface with other people were was another item thank you yeah interesting thank you bethany um there's a couple of interesting things that came out of our group which were the two things one was um the the habit of clutter, which I think sort of, for me, like covers most of the stuff that goes on. <laughs> if we could, uh, and everything has a everything has a place, but instead it, we get into this clutter. Um, and uh, the other thing that came up was is starting to recognise this. We probably start to recognise this from from sitting on a cushion. Yeah, and then the difficulty comes to coming off the cushion and getting re-engaged with everything that's going on around us. So uh, on the cushion, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, but once we get up, we're back into the into the daily grind again. It becomes much more difficult. So yeah. Um, there's a. Do you have something, Jen? You wanted to. I was just sort of saying, connecting those two points, it's like, you know, coming back from Sochine this weekend, it's just like, oh, you know, hanging around with Pat in the kitchen, it's just like, right, this is how I want to organise my house. And then it's like, but you're not the only person in this house. So like, I can come back and learn, right, this is how we're doing things. And it's just like, whoa, hold on. You might have decided that. <laughs> like the rest of us are still just cracking on as normal. <laughs> Yeah, my wife's great. She reorganizes the kitchen. I spend most of the time in it. She reorganizes it. And then I just, but I know the best way to deal with it is just let her reorganize it and then give it a day. And then I put it back to how I want it and she doesn't notice. So that's fine. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> rather than confronting the energy. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's a there's a Zen parable um, that comes to mind, and that some 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 of the group in Europe have heard me talk about it before. But it's uh, about a man on a horse, and uh, there's a man galloping along flat out on a horse, and he and he he passes another man at pass. He passes another man, and the man shouts out, "Where are you go? Where are you going?" And the man on the horse shouts back, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he said, he, oh, he shouts out, I don't know, ask the horse. Okay. So, uh, um, and it reminds me of uh, something that um, happened in my own life. When I started my business, it was strange. After a year, this is when I, this is probably 20 years ago, and I started a business. And a friend phoned me up. He was a quite a serious, well, he was a successful businessman. Phoned me up. He was a friend, and he phoned me up. He said, "How's it going?" And I remember saying to him before I knew anything about Zen or anything. I remember saying, "I said, it, to be honest, it's an effing nightmare." I said, "I've, I've start, I'm, I've joined, I've, I've got onto a merry-go-round, and I can't get fucking off." <laughs> so even at that point, I recognised that I'd started this thing, and it was just going round and round and round. That I'd created and there was no getting off of it with I suppose there was a way but it would have been a serious disruption you know something would have had to go bang stop you know people lose jobs and things so um you know I'd created this thing and it, at the time and then it just went on that went on for nearly well for at least over a decade um and but so we have this habit um these habit energies that I'd like to talk about that are taking us in the wrong direction. You know, we've got this horse, yeah, and it's going this way, but actually I feel like I need to go this way, yeah. Um, and I find myself, one of my own habits is what we talked about in our group, which I just mentioned, was, was this thing around what I talk about these days as noise. There's so much noise in our world, um, and I feel, I find myself almost needing to connect to the noise. The habit is that I can't go without the noise. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I need it. So I'm, and I see people, you know, in, in, in London continuously now, I was almost doing a percentage take on it the other day as people went past, you know, who is listening to our headphones and who isn't? Yeah, who is walking like this? I was sitting in a cafe actually in um, part of London and I was watching people go by with headphones in and a lot of people walk along like this all the time. <laughs> so it's like, what's the percentage? And there's about, as always in these things, about 80% of the people are either plugged in here or like this and 20% people walk by without any, without a phone, if you like. And it's, wow, that's a big percentage of people that are, are doing something else, are constantly connected. Um, and plugged in. Last night I was on the tube coming out of London, and you know you sit down and you always see it, people. There was a lady playing cards on her phone on the tube, you know, trying to fill the gap again. Can't just sit on the tube and enjoy the tube. I've got to do something, and it it, it can be something is, you know, distracting as playing cards. Um, so we have this habit of I see this. We have this habit of of running. And I find, and I've written about it in the past, where we're, you know, we're running, we're either running from the past, and I found myself there in my life, so I'm running away from the past, or I'm running to the future. Yeah, I'm running into the future in hope that what's going to occur in the future is going to be good. Which is absolutely crazy when you think about it. You stop, you just, you have to call yourself an idiot at that point, because like, where is it happening? If you're going to live a deeper life, a deeper existence where does that existence occur you know clearly it is like here now i mean we read this stuff eckhart toll whoever you know the power of now but the reality of it is our life is now yeah so um it makes sense if you want to live a deeper life that this is where it starts yeah so by giving everything to the talk today or being engaged with the talk today, we're actually here in the reality of the situation. Um, but it's just so easy through this habit energy to get to get drawn out of that. Um, and it's constantly pulling us, and I don't know why, but it constantly wants to get us somewhere fast. That's how it's been for me, yeah. 
um, but it doesn't. Now, one of the things I've delved through in my, through my Zen, and it's something that I haven't read this anywhere, but it's just an occurrence that came to me came to me recently, actually, with the um, the death of a uh, famous Vietnamese monk, Thich Nhat Hanh. And I was asked to, my wife's Vietnamese, and I was asked to give a talk on the night, the, the day after, she's got a large following in Vietnam of yoga students, and we had a, a sit um, the following morning after his death. And as often happens, there's quite a few people off the screen, and she turns to me and says, can you say a few words, sort of, you know, without prior warning? So it's like, well, okay. So, but for me, and I said this, and I mean this, Tinnik Han was, when you read about his life, and I've read about his life considerably, it was just a very, very ordinary life. Yeah. And through that ordinariness, I felt that he became extra, I would call it extraordinary. Extraordinary, you know. But most of us go looking for the extraordinary before we look for the ordinary. Yeah. In the ordinary day-to-day -day stuff is the extraordinary. Yeah. And I would say to people, if you head out looking to be extraordinary, yeah, something special will happen. Yeah. So. And I think, and that's how I, I think of Tinnick Hans' life, where he, where he achieved so much. I mean, written something like over, he's written over 120 books, or, you know, he's created communities around the world, but just through his ordinariness. Yeah. And that's um, tied up in these habits. Because we don't really have a, I can't think I have a habit that makes me want to be ordinary. <laughs> that doesn't, that's not one that leaps out of me. Oh, right, I want to be ordinary today. No one's going to spot me in the street. I'm just going to, you know, take it cool, uh, you know, sit around, really enjoy this cup of coffee. I'm not going to be ordinary. You know, it's always something that I have to achieve or, or want, to, want to put into life. Um, so so how, how, do, how do we make this transformation? That's the other thing we need to just discuss how do you, how do we transform these this habit energy this this you know running stuff that we have coming through us how do we transform it um, and I think you know the group in our group we've already talked about it slightly in that it starts with zazen yeah. so we first thing we need to become aware of this this running we need to be aware of as Bethany said the paracetamol so you know you need to have that awareness of of of, of what's going on before we can transform it. And we know we can transform it. And I would say we can transform it in, in the ordinary almost. So, so we can transform it through Zazen. Jen mentioned um, Seishin and also Keishin are powerful ways to help us transform that energy. And it's transformed in those environments, if you like. The ki is transformed for us through with with groups of people that helps us transform i mean seishin i mean we had a session this morning where jen talked about her experience at seishin and one of the things is that you know your encation is the same your uh, seishin is slightly more um i would call it more advanced but more intense if you like whereby you you have to follow the form yeah you have to follow the process at seishin and your habits don't want to they want to take you another direction, yeah. But 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 the process is that you're being forced, yeah. So you have this horse that wants to go that direction, but the form, yeah, is wanting to go that way. So so where where's the horse? If someone asks you where's the horse, you know, where are you going? It's a shin. It's quite easy. I'm going to zazen, yeah. I'm going for lunch. You know, I, you know through the form where you're going. It's laid out for you for the week, yeah? So the horse now gets a bit of a back backdrop, yeah? The horse is having to come with you, yeah? Because <laughs> that's where you're going, yeah? 
unless you know you can't cope with the situation and the horse bolts off down the drive and you leave spring green that's the only option you have for the horse yeah which on occasions it's say shin i can honestly say i've almost got on the horse and left say shin but um never quite so um so sitting zazen is this experience that that helps us overcome this habitual this habitual energy um and it's almost a we can call we could call it healing ourselves from our habits you know it's the process that um gives us that opportunity so what i'd like to do is just do a final breakout group we've got a we've got 15 minutes so we could probably have 10 minutes and a quick harvest um and the questions i'd like to ask is um are you riding the horse or is the horse riding you <laughs> yeah yeah who's who's the master and um and how are you currently trying to transform that habit energy at the moment what, what, what's your process you know what sort of things are we doing to transform the habitual energy yeah okay so if you can throw us into some more groups jen that would be great thank you i do like the efficiency of zoom and how it cuts us off yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's like so yeah so would anybody like to um share anything again that they that they took they took from the group um there's a lot to talk about trips in our group <laughs> and did you want to share i'm sure sure i'd be happy to um i am um planning a trip and and i'm going to be leaving for it and it's what andy said about like running to the future it's all it's been all about that it's been all about that trip and how i'm gonna you know pack the right things and go to the right places once i get there and you know just barreling towards the day of that trip and but what about the days between now and the day of the trip right anyway so so it's been really helpful to hear uh, folks in my group um, give me advice on how to stay better grounded. And I really love many of the things that you guys said, one of which was maintaining a distance um, between my internal monologue and what's going on in the present moment. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Something happened to my uh, video. I can't see anybody, but as long as you can hear me, that's fine. Yeah, interesting. Um, trips, I find trips interesting myself because as my Zen trainings progressed, and I don't know, if it, I often wonder if it's related or not, but my need for trips has fallen away. Hmm. Um, it's, um, I don't, it doesn't mean I don't go on trips, don't get me wrong, I just come back from the US to go to Zeshin and we're going on, on a trip to Vietnam in the summer. But I, I can honestly say that, and um, this isn't, a, this is quite recently, I, mean, I had, the, had the luck, I suppose, I probably wouldn't say it, but a few years ago, I was living in the, where Jen lives now in a beautiful area of England in Cornwall. And, and I, I wasn't, I was probably habitually not, not settled in the area. And then through circumstances, I ended up going to Vietnam and living in a, you know, mega city in Vietnam from this rural, idyllic beach environment in, in Cornwall. And it, I can honestly say it threw, initially it threw me out quite a lot. And, but, over that period since, the, the issue of where I am, it honestly makes, I feel now it makes just no difference to me who, who I am. I, I can sort of say I am, I am who I am wherever I am, put it, put it that way. Um, and, and I put that down through, you know, how can you, how, how can 
the cliffs in Cornwall be any more beautiful than a, a sweaty, dusty street in Ho Chi Minh City. I mean, they're just different. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we're going to get into different. Oh, that's beautiful. That's not beautiful. But if you can, once you go to the things that we've talked about today, I think um, partly one of the things that came out came out came out through our group was you know um, being present. Um, you know the joy, the habit of the habits of joy, um, open up open up for us. Yeah. So so it, it's the question, isn't it? I would say say Anne, you know, if you uh, you know step out, you know, how much pleasure if you sit down and sit down afterwards today and you know drink your tea or drink your coffee if you're fully concentrated on it, how much joy will that bring you? And you think of, I often think these days of, you know, even when I'm drinking my coffee, you know, how's it got to me? I mean, it's extraordinary in itself, isn't it? Um, how that, that, how that's arrived in front of me through the process of rain, sunshine, whatever it brings forth. Um, so we have these moments continuously there in front of us, but um, we just don't feed into them. Um, but then that's not, once again, I, let's go back to this thing of not getting caught in the experience. Something else we, caught, we talked about in our group again was not getting caught in that experience. So even with the coffee, yeah, it's there and then it's gone. Yeah, I'm not going to go away from it longing for another cup of coffee. Yeah, it's just the experience, the joy has come. And then we're moving through towards the next thing. So I suppose in some ways, Anne, your holiday is... You know, you could say, you know, what's the gap between if, if, if you drink a lot of coffee, what's the gaps between your cups of coffee? You know, am I craving for the next gap, the next coffee? Am I craving for the next chocolate biscuit? Yeah. So am I craving to go on a holiday? It's just different things, if that makes sense. Oh, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, yes. Any last last ones before we just finish? It's a couple of minutes past. But um, otherwise, thank you for for coming along. Thank you for listening. It's a pleasure to. It's always a pleasure to see you all um, and talk with uh, with you guys across the pond. Lovely to see you again, Bethany. After. Uh, spending a few days with you at Sashin and um, hope, hope to see you all again soon.